why Big Mother and not Big Brother? Right. Because obviously the pun is in the title and most people, especially when they're critiquing dystopias, they immediately fall back on 1984 and they think of the big paternalistic state. Yeah. Why is it a big maternalistic state? Yeah, well, I mean, why am I writing about it? I mean, the answer is because it is, right? Mm. Okay, people don't necessarily see it, but, but you do, and pr hopefully, presumably, many people who are going to watch this do see it. They do have it. It's become more visible that there is the, the totalitarianism we're under is 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 more of a female totalitarianism it's a it's a overprotective over caring state uh, to, to an extreme to a pathological degree uh, and a lot of the protective caring uh, agendas or uh, whatever we're going to call them, they, they do, do seem to be wolf in sheep's clothing, they do just pretext to control us. But nonetheless, there is a consistency behind the sort of rationale. And it is true, I think, indisputably true, that the kind of Orwellian state that we're living in now, uh, what is it, 80 years after he wrote uh, 1984, uh, it doesn't look like a, a jackboot you know, on a human face forever. It looks more like a needle in your arm that's saying, trust me, I'm a doctor, mm. right? It's, it, this is for your own good. And there isn't, it, there isn't this obvious uh, oppressive presence. Uh, a big part of this is um, what we've seen, or I feel I've seen, is, is that uh, people have been conditioned to police each other. So there's this sort of soft totalitarianism again, and, and whereby the iron boot doesn't have to show itself or the iron hand because everybody's been conditioned to keep each other in line so that draconian presence doesn't have to show itself. Um, I think I lost the thread there. But it, yeah, I, you're correct. And this, I think this is what Jonathan Haidt's written about quite a lot, um, as well as numerous other psychologists. And that is that female competition mechanisms are more covert. And therefore, if you're going to have a more female-centric totalitarian society in temperament, you're going to outsource the enforcement costs of behavior policing to social stain and henpecking. And it's going to be more concerned with the egalitarianism of how you feel than the hierarchical arrangement of um, there's a there's a, a, a party class and the pleb class. Like it's 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 a more it's a softer but more insidious form of totalitarianism than the Stalinism that commands you clap for the dear leader, for example. And that might be why it's more successful. That's why it's that's why it's leaked everywhere because we can't really see it as yeah. much. You can feel it though. You can definitely feel it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was thinking about this or talking about this recently that uh, this is very theoretical, but it's almost as if the hardcore fascism that we know historically now, Stalinism and Hitlerism, uh, you could say that they were tested, would they were, but you could also say that part of the testing of those kinds of totalitarianism was a way of priming us as collectively to think we know what fascism looks like. And so then we can, it's like it, we, we expect it to come from the right. And so we're just looking at the right for the jackboots. But no, they've already tried that. It didn't work. And part of trying it, maybe and maybe knowing it wouldn't work, or maybe not, but whatever, is, OK, now we can definitely come from the other side because we've. this is, this is a collective psychic imprint. This is the thing to avoid, right, is fascism. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from over there, right? So everybody's looking over that. So it comes from the left, right? That's, I mean, I think that's indisputable whether it was planned in advance or not. Um, and to bring it back to the uh, mother-brother thing, if I can, uh, I think there is a parallel in this. And certainly in our culture, there's, a, there's an enormous tendency to blame the male, the toxic masculinity, and to look at abusive fathers or absent fathers, although not so much that, because generally there's a view of it doesn't matter if he's absent because you don't need a father anyway. There's, I mean, that, there's a big clue in that, that that's become culturally accepted, that a father is expendable. Um, so, but either way, uh, there is a tendency to identify the problem in terms of um, bad parenting with the father rather than with the mother and obviously the cliche i think it's obvious of a bad father is again it's much more it's written much larger like what does a bad mother look like mm. um 
it's much subtler and more insidious the, the harm that a, a bad mothering can do to a psyche, in particular, you know, I'm focusing on male psyche for reasons maybe we'll get into. Uh, it, it, it's much more invisible and therefore more insidious. Um, and, uh, but the effects are much deeper for that very reason. Well, that's the interesting thing about the institutionalization of care. This is something that I think uh, some of the more reactionary women that are looking at modernity and going, well, hang on, we've, we've technicalized everything um, up until and including the female body with birth control, with abortion, with surrogacy, with daycare. Um, what you've done is you've extricated the father from the home and now you've extricated the children from the home, but it's not that you've disconnected them from a mothering influence. You've pathologized the mothering influence and then stuck it in a baby factory, essentially. And so you've now got a collective societal swaddling that is impeding their development while also giving them a maladaptive connection to the state, to its institutions, to its poorly paid um, representatives in in daycare and, and schooling and things like that, um, which have very maternal instincts. They're, they're almost un ubiquitously populated by women. But the children, are not, uh, they're being reared in a maternal way, but it's that Oedipal mother rather than the, the comforting mother. So father's entirely gone. Mother has been pathologized, institutionalized and, and rolled out totally. And that's what's creating the kinds of people that want to go out and write in the street and, and tear down the civilization because they don't really feel connected to it. Yeah, well, that's like a tantrum, I think, in this analogy we're making, because, I mean, one fairly simple way, perhaps, to illustrate the big mother state as it's evolved is, because we're in Britain, you know, the, the social the care system, social support system, that doesn't foster autonomy uh, and independence and self-sufficiency. And so if you think of that in, in the microcosm of parenting, a mother uh, coddles the child, keeps it safe, keeps it warm, um, uh, whereas the father at a certain point comes to intervene and to take the child outside of the mother's influence and to teach it to stand on its own two feet. That's the father's role. And so we, I think we could see that the state, if we're going to call it out, but the big mother state, for simplicity's sake, that that's one of the ways it's, it's evident is it hasn't, it hasn't been doing this. It hasn't been motivating and driving. And I'm talking particularly about men because it's complicated because, of course, women have been more and more, uh, encouraged, quote, or uh, manipulated to become autonomous and independent, uh, even though they're, they're in the same system of care and obviously uh, single mothers have been supported so that also you know, increases the chances that fathers will be made obsolete. So there are, there are a lot of nuances, there's danger of oversimplifying but the main point I did want to make was just this, that um, uh, autonomy isn't fostered uh, by this, the state, the care state, whatever we want to call it, the nanny state um, and that's intentional, is my view. Like I, uh, Vice of Kings that I wrote a few years ago was specifically about the Fabian Society and the formation of the Labour Party and the principles behind the Fabian Society. And uh, uh, that it, it's not, it wasn't, I don't think it was a matter of not, of lack of uh, far seeing uh, that a, a care, st a social care state uh, would actually reduce people's self-sufficiency, that it backfired. No, I think it was it was mapped out in advance. Um, so, uh, the yeah, so what do you have when a people have not been allowed to grow up because they've been over-mothered, uh, both literally in their childhood and uh, figuratively, symbolically, as we're talking about in, in society, you, you have people who didn't grow up, so they're infantilized. And you see that very easy examples in terms of we live in an entertainment state. I mean, this is, this is in Orwell, it's also in Brave New World. Pe people are basically constantly given all the kinds of distraction and entertainment they could ever want to death. I mean, amusing themselves to death in the, your postman phrase. Um, 
and, and what happens there? Well, a number of things happen. There's certainly generally impotency is going to be a result figuratively or literally f for men specifically. Uh, but impotency doesn't, you know, there's going to be rage behind that. Right? Impotency, a feeling of powerlessness and not being able to really identify what's oppressing them. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.